Hey guys, welcome back to this YouTube channel. May has been an absolutely crazy month for the Calgary real estate market. There are a lot of shift in trends depending on the community, depending on the property type that you look at. And we saw a lot of this coming because if you're part of this channel, you know that we did the mid-month update in May and we were able to predict a lot of the trends beforehand before we waited for the June report. And so that was the benefit that you got by looking at those videos. So today, if you watch that video, there's not gonna be too many new surprises. A lot of those trends actually aligned with the predictions that we had. And we're still gonna look at the data and see where the market's headed for the next 30 days. But if you stay tuned on this channel in 15 days, I'm gonna do the mid-June update, which is, this is the only channel that actually does that. And so that way we stay on top of the trends and whether you're a buyer, seller, or investor, you, ex you know exactly what's happening in the market at any given time. And you are being proactive versus reactive because when the market reports come at the end of the month, everyone's reacting to that versus staying updated on the market at all times. If this is your first time on this channel, welcome. I'm Ash Iyer, your Calgary realtor, and I love looking into data. I'm a very data oriented person personally in my life and also as a realtor. And therefore, I love helping people empower them with the data and help them understand the real market trends is not always the best time to buy or sell. It all depends on your personal situation, what your goals are in the real estate market, what you're looking to do. So my link's in the description. If you still have questions after this video, feel free to reach out. Just book a call. It's super easy. I promise you it's going to be a great conversation. We get all the high hellos out of the way and just sit down and understand what your needs are, whether you're looking to buy in the next three, six or 12 months. And we will set you up with a game plan because there's no one size that fits all. And I look forward to helping you. So without further ado, let's get into the market data for this month. So to kick it off, we're going to look at the summary by the Calgary Real Estate Board and look at what they have to say about the Calgary real estate market. I'm only going to go over the highlighted points. Feel free to pause the screen at any time in the video. Right over here, you can see that in May, we saw a total of 3,092 sales. So that was a slight drop month over month, but 1% below the last year's record high and 34% higher than longer term trends for this month. So while month over month, we saw a slight drop, but that does not reflect the resilience of the Calgary real estate market because we are 34% higher than longer term trends. So we're still seeing very strong trends as far as sales go, primarily driven by decline in lower price detached and semi-detached homes where there was a limited supply choice compared to last year. So although new listings have increased a lot this month, much of that growth was actually in the higher price points. And this was something that we were seeing in the last couple of months but it looks like it's getting even worse because the gap between where the buyers are in the market and where the sellers are entering are two very different price points. The economic situation has supported sales growth in these higher price ranges. So a lot of people are pulling their equity out of those lower priced homes, moving to the high priced homes, or they're looking to either downsize so a lot of people trying to capitalize on the market as it is right now. Increase in new listings compared to sales caused the sales to new listings ratio to drop to 71%. So while we are seeing a drop in sales to new listings, it's not truly reflective of the pressures in the market because this takes into account that there are a lot of new listings on the higher price range, but that doesn't really help the buyers that we have right now. Supporting a modest year-over-year -year inventory gain. Despite this, inventory levels have remained half of what we typically see in May, with most gains driven by houses priced over 700,000. And a lot of people moving to the city or trying to get into their first home are not looking to spend more than 700,000. Several districts continue to report less than one month of supply, while the city center actually reported the highest supply to sales ratio at one and a half month. Taking a look at the benchmark price changes, so the total residential benchmark price went up by $1,600 to $605,300. So that's a 9.5% year-over-year gain. The detached went up by $12,800 to $761,800. So that's a 13% gain. Semi-detached went up to went up by $9,600 to $678,000. That's a 13.2% gain. A row townhouse went up by $4,400 month over month. So that's a 462500 price point at 19.3% gain year over year. 
And as far as apartment goes, um, it would look like the Calgary Real Estate Board has actually made a mistake. As for the number that they are saying, the apartment price went down by 5,700. But if you calculate the month over month uh, price increase, we are actually at 352,000 roughly for the benchmark price and that is a 17.9 percent gain year over year so all property types continue to go up looking at the overall benchmark per district and this is super important to understand depending on because even though you look at the calgary real estate market overall it's important to understand based on the macro market that micro market that you're looking to invest into how that is performing and so actually we've actually saw some declines this month um, month over month in terms of the gains and this is the first time so north actually went down by one thousand dollars you can see northeast went up by four thousand nine hundred east went down by one hundred uh city center went down by two thousand four hundred dollars and northwest and west are seeing sig significant gains compared to all other areas in the market so overall slower gains in the market compared to like the last three months that we've been looking at so clearly we are seeing and this was reflected in the mid-month report that we did because i pull all the data off the market middle of the month and see where the trends are headed and we could see a slowdown in terms of the prices we also saw an increase in the day zone market and this is now reflective in this report so gains in the west actually remain slow at a pay, at the compared to the pace where the gains were for the last month and even for west last month slower gains in west were met with stronger gains this month so west actually did really well for the three months before last month and then last month it slowed down significantly and now it's picking back up but it's still nowhere close because we were seeing fifteen thousand gains month over month for like three months in a row around the december jan feb air timeline and then after that we saw a drop so and as far as east goes significant change in the east from a 5600 gain the previous month to actually going negative so that is interesting as far as the total inventory versus sales go this is very very important because in march we actually changed the trend where we were seeing more sales happen than inventory and so we were eating up into the inventory causing a huge price gain to happen but it looks like this month the inventory has finally overtaken the sales again but if comparing it back to the summary that we read the reason the inventory has gone up so much is because we're seeing a lot of properties above that seven hundred thousand mark so even though the inventory shows that it's significantly above this amount of sales happening i don't think it's really going to help as far as the price point goes um it is a good position to be in for the market and it will help some buyers who are just on that edge of the 700,000 mark to go over and potentially get some properties but overall it's not really going to do much for the price point according to my perspective it's still in a pretty strong market of course the trend that we saw at the start of the year is significantly stronger than uh, what we're seeing right now we are starting to I wouldn't say plateau but the inertia is running out month over month as far as sales go the numbers that are actually driving all of this so like i said month over month we dropped by 0.8 percent sorry year over year we dropped by 0.8 percent month over month uh we saw a slight increase but of 200 more sales month over month but it is still nowhere close to the kind of sales increase we were seeing at the start of the year as far as new listings go you can see new listings increased by significantly more so 842 month over month and as far as inventory goes that resulted in 691 increase in inventory so that's actually opposite of what we were seeing before where we were eating into our inventory as far as months of supply go here on the left you can see that the trend that we were in so we were initially at 1.3 couple of months ago we dropped to 1.1 months of supply uh, 0 0.95 0 0.94 and then now we are back to 1.1 so things are easing back in the market but again this is an overall market stat so it depends on which part of the market you're trying to buy or sell it would probably reflect a little different so now taking a look at the summaries for per property type as you can see here the gain in detached sales for homes priced above 700,000 was not enough to offset the pullbacks across the lower price ranges as year-over-year year sales declined by seven percent so overall we are still as far as 
overall market goes for Detach, we're still seeing a drop of 7%. As far as sales go, new listings rose enough to cause the sales to new listings to actually drop to 68%. So there's really not enough options for those affordable buyers to choose from. Inventory levels from homes priced below 600000 continue to fall, accounting for only 13% of the detached market. This is a crazy stat. Can you believe it? All the detached homes in the Calgary market, only 13% of them fall below 600000 The remaining is all above 600000 So it's becoming a pretty expensive market for detached homes. Taking a look at semi-detached, the year-over-year -year decline in sales did not offset earlier gains as year-to-date sales rose by nearly 11%. So like the detached sector, we have also seen an improved levels of new listings come onto the market, causing the sales of new listings to drop again to 72%. And this has driven some gains in inventory levels. But again, it's not truly reflective of the affordable part of the market. How is row townhouses performing? May reported 540 sales, a gain over last year that has contributed to the 16% year-to-date rise. So at the same time, new listings also rose, supporting a gain in inventory levels. Um, inventory levels have declined for properties below 400. So while for detached, we are seeing that 600 to 700,000 mark being the threshold of where properties that are actually being listed versus what buyers want. For townhouses, that's 400,000. So below 400,000, we are very, very low on inventory. Above 400,000, you have a couple more options, but still extremely competitive. So with a sales to new listings ratio of 78%, a month of supply below one, month conditions continue to favor the seller. So it's real, extremely competitive. Looking at the apartments, May sales continue to rise, contributing to the year-to-date record high of 19% gain of sales, new listings preventing a further drop in inventory, gains for products above 300,000 offset the steep declines for lower priced homes. So a lot of homes below 300,000 are just being completely taken off the market. And mostly all the gains that we are seeing in the inventory or new listings is all coming from above 300,000, which basically makes up for what we're losing below 300,000. As far as months of supply goes, uh, taking a look at how the different areas are performing. So the lower the graph for whichever quadrant you're looking at and which property type you're looking at, the more competition you're going to face. The higher the bar means the more months of supply, the more properties are available for that area for that property type. So how does this look like? Um, taking a look at detached, here we see that the highest competition is actually in the east. Significant increase in supply from city center because last month we were at 1.45 but now we are almost close to touching two months of supply overall the increase in months of supply we are seeing is across all areas as far as detached goes but i suspect a lot of that is still from those higher price points significant increase in months of supply for north and northeast as far as apartment goes and months of supply almost half when it came to east Months of supply doubled in the south and tripled in the west for semi-detached. Northwest also saw a significant increase in months of supply. As far as row townhouses go, significant drop in southeast and west, significant increase in north and northeast. So that's how, so the more it drops, the more competitive it's going to get. And the more it increases, the more options you have to shop from. As far as total sales go, you can see the trend. Sales trend for May is the strongest that we've seen since 2010, and this continues month over month, just below 2023. As far as total inventory goes, you can see better in, we have better inventory than May last year, just by a little bit, and an improvement compared to what we've seen from Jan to April at the start of the year. So overall inventory, it's improving, but this has been mostly due to the increase in new listings seen in the unaffordable part of the market. So this is a very like high level view and does not truly reflect depending on the area that you're looking at. Now taking a look at the total inventory by price range. So this is all the inventory we have across the different price ranges for this month. And I have marked the red lines where we were last month. So you can clearly tell where there have been significant increases, drops or stagnation. Um, overall, between the 300 to 400,000 range, we have actually seen a significant increase, which is good. Um, 
but it might not necessarily be the property you're looking for. Maybe that would have been two bedrooms initially, but now it's a one bedroom. And then we've also seen a significant increase from 400,000 to 500,000 range. This was followed by good improvements in the 500 to 600,000 range with a significant increase in the 700. So you can see where all the inventory actually came in this month is between the 700,000 to a million dollars. That saw the largest bump compared to last month and then smaller improvements across the board. Sales, as how does sales compare to this inventory? Because that's where it's very, very important. You gotta understand that's where the sellers are coming in, but how are the buyers in the market? Where are they looking to make the most purchases? So sales in sub 200 picked up and got back to March levels. Improvements in sales have mostly been in the 400 to 500,000 segment. Sales in the 700,000 to a million dollars has actually stagnated. So even though we saw a huge increase in inventory in the 700,000 to a million dollars, it looks like the buyers are not willing to meet those sellers. This is one of my favorite charts. I'm not going to explain it too much, but it's great for buyers. So what you do is just pick a price range that you're willing to spend on the left side. Then you pick a house type from the bottom and then you will get what areas you can potentially afford. And now this is purely based on benchmarks. So again, depending on your house configuration, it might be a little bit different, but it gives you a good high level idea. Taking a look at how the benchmark price has trended. Um, overall, since last May, we have seen a 52,600 increase and a $89,000 increase since Jan 23. Now, Calgary Real Estate Board did change the criteria for benchmark um, calculation this month in terms of what qualify, what types of houses the benchmark qualifies for. And so that's why all these numbers would have changed if you just looked at last month's report compared to this month's report. And so they're all updated. So the gains are a little bit different, but that's what you're looking at um, in terms of the one year, year over year gains as far as benchmark goes. And if you basically waited all the way since Jan 2023, then that's what the loss is. Rate cuts over the second half of the year could further stimulate the market. Um, the benchmark to a minimum of 650,000 to up to maybe 670. So that's my prediction. 650 should be easy to hit given the current rate of increase. 670 is a little optimistic, but I think we can make it happen. So city of Calgary, total new listings. As you can see, improvement over last month. We are hitting the 10 year average finally and significantly, still significantly below 2021 and 2022 because those were very good years. As far as total sales go, sales data closely mimics the new listing data for 2022, 23 and 24. So that is, if you look at the longer term trend between 2014 to 2020, sales to listing data is quite different. But between 2022 and 2024, they very closely mimic. And so what that reflects is that the buyers are trying to meet the sellers where they are at. So anything that gets listed on the market, there's always a buyer for it and they try to take it off the market. Finally, taking a look at the total prices uh, as far as median, benchmark and average go. As you can see here, the average continues to push the benchmark price higher. So even though there's a slowdown in the month of a month inertia, but the average price continues to push the benchmark up and the median corrected down a little bit. And this could just be attributed with the increase of sales between the 300 to 400,000 range, since that brings the overall price bracket down in terms of the actual sales that are happening. But the average is still trending up. And so that was all for this month's update. I hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions about any specific graph that I showed or any data point, definitely reach out. I would love to have a call with you guys. And depending on really which community you're looking at, depending on the exact configuration of the house that you're looking for, for your family or investment, or what your investment strategy is, these numbers could be quite a bit different. And that's where if you looked at my mid month update, we have spreadsheets on the back end, we pull a lot of data, and you get very customized graphs, depending on the community that you're looking at. And so definitely reach out. Let's set up a game plan for the next three, six months. So you stay informed in the market. You know exactly what's happening because just this video is probably not enough. It wouldn't be for me if I was trying to buy an investment property or trying to buy my first home. Um, there's a lot more behind the scenes that I now know about, and I would love to help you with that. And I hope you found this video useful. If you did, definitely show your support. 
drop a like below. It helps me reach more people like you in the market. And that's just how the YouTube algorithm works. So I would appreciate that. And until next time, take care.